Hey YouTube, I'm here today talking about one of my favorite sample libraries, uh, the BBC Symphony Orchestra by Spitfire Audio. The reason why I wanted to do a video on this library is because I bought it two years ago, right around the time when it came out, and I, I liked it at the time, but I didn't know how it would hold up in my template over time. You know, I have a ton of string libraries. I have uh, chamber strings, I have century strings, I have uh, Jaeger. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. So it's pretty obvious that I love this library for the strings. The woodwinds are great too, and I'll talk about that as well. Uh, the percussion's okay, um, although I do have other libraries that are equal to or better than it. The brass flat out sucks, and we'll we'll talk about that towards the end, but um, I, I do not use the brass in this library. But I have been using this as my bread and butter strings library um, since day one, and despite having all of those other libraries, it's still held a place in my template to this day. So let's get right into it. Um, the best thing that I love about this library is its sound. The sound is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, it has this lush 3D sort of symphonic sound. You know, I've tried Spitfire symphonic strings. I've tried um, like Berlin strings, uh, stuff like that. I haven't tried cinematic studio strings. I know everybody loves it, so don't kill me on that one. But everything that I've tried just sounds thin in comparison to me. And this is all my opinion, of course. But it seems whenever I go to another string library and use it for a few days, I always seem to come kind of crawling back. So anyway, here's the uh, Violins 1 uh, legato patch. And just so you know, I'm controlling the mod wheel with my foot, uh, so that's why you don't see me uh, doing anything over here. So the mic positions that I have enabled, I have 100% uh, of close in, and then I have 70% of tree in, and then I have 50% of the leader mic in. And we'll talk about the leader mics, but that's that's one of my favorite things as well. But this is my preferred uh, mix choice. Um, I do like how the close and the leader gives the sound a lot of definition while still using the tree to sort of fill it up. I haven't really use any of the outriggers or any of the spill mics um, and any of the, you know, more ambient ones because I do prefer my own reverb. I use uh, the Cinematic Rooms by Liquid Sonics and I sort of have my own little custom Deep Hall uh, preset here and my whole orchestra goes through that so they all sort of uh, glue together that way. So again, this is what it sounds like with my mix. Now this is what it sounds like with just the uh, mix one knob. So this is kind of a conglomerate of like co uh, close tree outrigger and stuff like that. I don't really use this one as much because I like making my own sound with this. I mean, that's the reason why I got professional so I can have all the mic positions, but this is what it sounds like. Now it does sound fuller and I do like the way it sounds, but it is a little too wet to be able to use with my uh, reverb, which means it's a little bit more difficult to blend with uh, some of the other libraries that I use. Here's cellos. This is uh, my mix. It's got a real meaty sound on the low end. Now, another thing I love about this library is the insane amount of long articulations that it comes with. Um, when you think about BBC SO, it's kind of like a all-in-one sort of orchestra thing. Um, they did not need to include this many um, string articulations. Like, it's nuts. So we have regular longs.
We have Flautando, which is uh, what Spitfire's most known for, almost uh, memeably so. But it does sound really good. We have tremolo, of course, the usual stuff. Now, I hardly ever use the regular tremolo because this actually comes with a uh, tremolo saw point, and I actually love the sound of this. It's like so thin and fragile. And so usually when I want sort of the tremolo effect, I usually reach for the tremolo cell point. It's got the trills. Nobody cares about trills. No, I mean, sorry if, if, if you care about trills. I, I do use the, the minor second quite a bit, but it's got long saltasto. When you want that really quiet sound. It's got harmonics. Now, something I love to do is I like to combine the long harmonics with this uh, tremolo saw point. And you can do this by holding down uh, control. No, shift. Yeah, holding down shift. So that actually combined the articulation so they're both going to play at the same time. And I just love the sound that that makes. Next, we have the regular saw point. And we have Consortino, of course. So that's really the bread and butter of the BBC SO library for me. I use the strings probably nine times out of 10. Um, as you can see, I do have the chamber strings and the century strings in my template, and I do use uh, Jaeger for some stuff, uh, mostly the shorts, as you can see. Um, but usually I reach for BBC. Now, as if that wasn't enough, BBC comes with my favorite solo cello of all time. Now I don't own some of the um, really good ones like um, the Tina Gao one, um, Bohemian cello. I hear that those are both um, excellent, um, but this solo cello came with BBC and it honestly sounds better than any other one that I have.
No, that, that didn't make any sense. But anyway, this is the solo cello that I always reach for. And it's funny because when they included the the leaders, like the violin, uh, viola, cello, and bass leader, um, they didn't intend it to be like a bread and butter solo library. But this is the cello that I reach for the most. It's just got this really emotive, um, expressive uh, vibrato and this like achingly beautiful uh, dynamic to it. Here is the bass's legato. I mean, that is thick. The basses are a chunky boy. Now, the shorts are not bad. Um, the timing is pretty wonky. Um, so you can't play any like fast 16 note runs or anything like that with the shorts or fast 16 note ostinatos. Um, but you can um, layer this over top. So let's program something in real quick. probably sound like crap. So here I'm using the Jaeger uh, violin spiccatos. Um, I just love these shorts. Uh, they're really accurate. She doesn't copy and paste that a couple times. So yeah, that line sucks, but you get the idea. Um, so this is my go-to library for shorts. However, it just doesn't sound as good um, like room tone and recording quality as the BBC. So what I like to do is I like to use this as the base for the um, ostinatos and then I'll literally just copy it and stick it on the BBC track as well. So that way I can kind of use um, the BBC as sort of the room sound. So let's listen to the BBC by itself. It's not going to sound as accurate. Actually, you can pull the tightness up and it's a little bit better. So not great, but put them together. So you get the bite and the accuracy of the Jaeger uh, spiccatos, but you get sort of the room tone of um, the BBC. And so that's how I do a lot of my spiccatos. Now, I don't use a lot of woodwinds in my music, um, at least not right now. Um, but when I do, I do reach for the BBC woodwinds. The only other woodwinds library that I have is the uh, Native Instruments one, and it's, it's decent. It's not nearly as good. I do have some of the special um, like ethnic woodwinds from orchestral tools, uh, stuff from like the Phoenix um, Orchestra and whatnot. But whenever I need just some bread and butter normal woodwinds, I reach for BBC. So this is the uh, Piccolo Legato. Beautiful sound. 
Now, whenever I do use woodwinds, it's usually a solo woodwind instrument. I hardly ever use um, woodwinds as a section. So here's the solo flute sound. Here's a section flute sound. To me, it just doesn't have enough definition and it has sort of this chorusy effect that makes it sound a little fake. Um, I guess if I was writing a full orchestral piece uh, that required a woodwind section, it would probably f sound fine within the orchestra. So, but just the way that I personally use woodwinds, it's usually um, a solo instrument. Here's the solo clarinet. Here's the oboe. Now the woodwinds do come with um, a good amount of bread and butter articulations too. Um, it's just the strings in BBC that they seem to go all out on. I mean, they recorded everything, but it does have like these multi tongues that I like. Those are very useful, and these two new notes I like. I really like. So that is the extent of to which I use BBC Orchestra in my template. Um, it does include percussion. It does include brass, but over the years, I've supplemented them with other libraries. Now, the brass is just plain weak sounding. Um, it doesn't necessarily concern me that it doesn't go above mezzo forte because I don't always um, write super hyped, like epic trailer sound brass. I do like that low um, mezzo piano to mezzo forte sort of brass sound, but it just doesn't sound good. It doesn't have enough dynamic layers in general, so when you crossfade between the dynamic layers, it's, uh, it sticks out quite a bit. And the sound itself is very muffled and dark sounding. Now, it's possible that it's the room um, that they recorded in. However, I have seen um, the BBC orchestra perform in that room before and the brass sounds great. So I'm not sure where they went wrong here, but um, that is the part of li the library where I feel like they really dropped the ball. The percussion is decent and it does sound good. Um, I rarely use it anymore because I do have other libraries that can do um, sort of the same thing, if not better. But I, use, I do use the timpani sometimes because it does come with these uh, different uh, hits and articulations. Like it has soft hits and soft rolls, um, uh, hot rods and rolls with the hot rods and then damped and then stuff like that. So it does have a lot of options to choose from. My one complaint is that uh, the rolls aren't timed. So it's hard for me to uh, 
use this when I have things like True Strike, which has like adaptive sync and that it has that new technology where you can just hold down a key and then it'll roll to the next downbeat um, despite what count you start on. That technology is almost a must have for me these days. Um, so I'm not sure why other sample libraries don't jump for that. Same thing with civil rules. I mean, I, I do like the civil rule sound, but it's hard for me to use when I don't know when um, it's going to land, essentially. So the way that the rolls work um, for the timpani, at least, is that it's basically just a tremolo. And then whenever you release it is the release sample. But that becomes problematic when you're trying to program things and you're trying to time things uh, perfectly because the release will actually happen after the downbeat. So say I'm recording this. So you can see like the release always lands after the downbeat. And the dynamic layer isn't fantastic either. I prefer true recorded rolls, um, even if they have to be stretched to sync to the tempo, uh, just because that sounds more natural. Now the symbols do have pre-recorded rolls. However, there's nothing on the UI indicating how many bars the roll is. All it has is this variation knob, um, which apparently has three different settings, which if it has three different settings and why put it on a knob, that's kind of confusing. But as you can see, this is the shortest. Put it up to about halfway. And it's a little bit longer and then put it all the way. But again, these aren't tempo synced. So in order to use this, I would have to um, record it and then I would have to render it as audio so I can clearly see where uh, the release is. Now it is a great sound and it does um, blend with the rest of the BBC um, library uh, well, but for that kind of stuff, I usually reach for True Strike um, just so I can have the adaptive sync and I, I can know where uh, the release is going to land. Now, the reason why I didn't show a lot of the percussion and I didn't show the brass at all is because I truly think that the strings and the woodwinds are outstanding enough to uh, warrant the money. So when I got this, I got this on sale for seven fifty. dollars um, So if you think about it, that's what, $3.75 each for strings and woodwinds? That's not unreasonable, especially when you take into consideration that it comes with way more articulations and uh, mic positions than a lot of other libraries. And then throw in the fact that you do get the brass, you do get the percussion, although I don't use those uh, quite nearly as much. Um, and I think that this library is well worth the money. The other really great thing when you get the professional edition is that it also comes with the core and the discover edition. So I use the core edition on my laptop because it uses less RAM when you use the, uh, the mix position. And I also use the discover um, edition when I um, work with Dorico, when I work with notation. It's just easier to work with notation when you're using a little bit of a lighter library. So when you get professional, you essentially get those three different versions that you can use on three different devices if you wanted to. So thanks guys for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I'm going to do more of these videos in the future. Uh, so please like and subscribe. Two years later, this library is still kicking ass and it still has a nice home in my template. Let me know in the comments what you think about it and uh, how you use it. All right, guys. See you next time.